Hello gang, and welcome back to the place to hear real reports of cryptid creatures and the unexplained. Tattooed Biker here with you, and tonight I've compiled five real reports and true stories where folks encounter disturbing dogmen or canine type cryptids. From bone chilling encounters in the American woods to unnerving sightings as far away as Europe, these stories will leave you questioning what lurks out there in the shadows. And one of these stories, well, they even included a photo that captures the creature that was stalking its victim. So grab your silver bullets and let's ride to Dogman Country. <laughs> Number one, dear biker, when my wife was younger, she had a therapist that she saw regularly. She had formerly worked as a physician in the U.S. Navy. He was also an officiant and ended up marrying me and her years later. Anyway, he told her of a time that he encountered what he described as dog band. Now, this was the first time I'd ever heard of them, and... It's what got me interested in investigating and reading more about them. I don't have all the specifics on where exactly it occurred, but it was in a heavily wooded area, somewhere in North Georgia. He and his wife had gone to a two-story cabin far out in the woods on vacation for a few days. They were pretty far from the nearest town, and so there weren't any other buildings nearby. So what he told us is that he and his wife woke from sleep at night, Feeling intense dread, they made their way to the stairs and down to the first level. And when they looked out the window, they saw a creature staring back at them. Now this thing appeared to be a bipedal canine. It was up on two legs and walking like it was its normal gait. He said that the head was a human canine cross with very sparse hair. It didn't have a tail. It was snarling, which they could actually hear from inside the cabin. I know they weren't harmed, but they were definitely spooked and felt that fear. I wish I had more details, but that is as much as I know. I've always wondered if it could have been a shapeshifter, possibly even a werewolf, even though that seems just a bit too incredible. North Georgia is heavily wooded, and there's a lot of national and state parks. The terrain is mountainous and hilly, so it's not ideal for farming and there aren't many major cities out there for the same reason. So it's pretty easy to find large stretches of uninterrupted forest. I've heard of another encounter in South Georgia and one of the major swamps. And I've also read about an encounter that happened just north of me in Dayton, Tennessee. Thanks for reading. Signed, Matthew. Number two. Hey, TB. Back on April 28, 2024, my stepdaughter's dad and I decided to go turkey hunting on wildlife management area on the outskirts of Knoxville, Tennessee, called Forks of the River. We get out in the area early morning around 4.30 or 5 to get a game plan on where we can find turkeys. We're out there a little before dawn and we start walking the trail. The woods were eerily quiet we stopped, hit an owl call, and had two turkeys gobble off in the distance. We decided to head off in that direction. After daylight, we called and called, but couldn't get anything to respond. We keep walking along until we find big fields along the river. We sat down and called again, but again there was nothing. At 7 a.m., we decided to work our way back towards the vehicle. We were on the back side of this property, along an equipment shed, and we decided to cut off through the woods to get back on the trail that we were originally on. As soon as we got off into the woods, I noticed there was something keeping pace with us. I researched Bigfoot and Dogman. I wasn't going to say something until he heard it. We walked up and out of the creek bed, and this thing has been following us for around 20 minutes now. 
My companion says there's something following us, and I told him it's been there for about 20 minutes. So I decided to take pictures, 180 degrees behind us. We finally got out of the area, and this thing seemed to have stopped following us. Upon getting back home and looking through the pictures, one of them struck me to the core. In the center of one of them was a creature. We walked right through this area, and there was a small laydown tree, but there was no stump in that location. What is in this picture is a canine-like creature that almost looks like an enormous pit bull. This is my second encounter with a dog man, and although I never saw this creature, we both heard it following us distinctly and could tell it was bipedal and keeping pace with us. Thanks for reading. Signed, Harley. Number three. Hello, Tattooed Biker. I've been living in Brebent, the Netherlands, for a while, a few kilometers before the border of Belgium. A few weeks ago, I went on holiday to Witchland, Belgium. A few family members of mine live there, so I was going to stay overnight. Now, I'm very fond of walking, and I do that every day. I went for a walk on Tuesday evening. After having walked for about half an hour, I walked over a bridge. It was very quiet, almost unusually quiet. This I found not really strange, but just giving peace. I stopped just at the end of the bridge to get some water out of my backpack. At that moment, I heard something that sounded like iron coming against something. Something like an iron chain. I heard it very softly the first time and thought it was coming from far off, so I thought nothing of it special. After a few seconds, I heard it for the second time. This time it sounded very close, so I wondered what it was. There wasn't anyone around me as far as I knew. I didn't worry, but it was just very strange. I then think that I thought it was a homeless person or something that was under the bridge. It was about 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and I heard the same weird sound under the bridge. I decided to keep listening until I heard some sort of howling. I remember falling back because I was so shocked. It was a weird whine that you would expect from a dog or a wolf. It sounded very heavy, deep, but dull. I was very shocked because I couldn't identify the sound. I actually stopped because I was so scared. It was such a different feeling. So much fear that you will remain standing. At that moment, when I looked down, I saw a kind of dog-like creature that was walking on two legs. It was so huge I knew it couldn't be a dog. It was black and had some kind of wings on its back. It had a kind of chain around its leg. If I remember correctly, on his left leg. I think there was water under the bridge because it was wet. At a moment, it turned around and looked me in the eyes. They were very dark eyes. Its head looks a bit like that of a big wolf. At that moment, I knew I had to run. I stumbled a few times and therefore sprained my ankle. I've never seen anything like this true. I told one person who lived in the neighborhood and he said it was really what I saw. He mentioned a name, but I can't think of it anymore. I thought about sharing it for a long time because I still have nightmares about it. I'm also glad I lost it, and I hope that you or someone in your community might know what it is. Sorry for the bad English. Signed, Dirk. Number four. Hey TV, this occurred in 2019 near my home in northeast Wales, next to the highlands near the town of Langland, Devonshire. This was a new home for us. We are living in an old house that no one had lived in for over 30 years. It was built in between two old yew trees. We have four acres of woodland behind the cottage that backs onto a wood that leads into a larger forest. When we moved in, I started to explore the land beyond the garden and worked out where I was going to put the polytunnel. 
The plan was to create a forest garden and to clear space for things, and it's pretty wild and thick with bramble bushes and so forth. As soon as I went up to the first level and looked to the left where it's quiet, heavily wooded, and dark, I felt immediately uneasy. And this is odd for me because I love the woods and to go out foraging regularly, and I've always felt at home out and about in the wilderness. A few days after clearing the space for the tunnel, we had a bonfire to get rid of all the brush. It was damp, so the fire made a lot of smoke until it eventually got going and burned itself down. It was starting to get dark and I needed to put a tea on, so I left my partner to keep an eye on the fire and off I went. A good 20 minutes later, he came running into the house saying something was sliding down the bank towards him, but he couldn't see a thing. He could hear it and could tell it was getting closer and closer, and he was genuinely scared as he couldn't see anything. The next thing that happened was when I was out in the hazel coppice, just chilling out watching the squirrels. All of a sudden, there was a big whoosh next to me that came from behind me. It was as if something big had flown past my head and I could feel the wind on my face as it passed. I had really expected to see a buzzard fly down or perch in one of the trees, but there was nothing at all to be seen. That really was impossible because of where it would have had to fly to exit the wood. I would have seen it. It wasn't long after this that I finally saw the creature. I was walking my dog in the late afternoon in the beginning of October of 2019. I had decided to go down to the River Dee which has a small wooden bridge across it. It's on an ancient pathway near an old church, not far from our cottage. I got to where there's a big oak tree on the bank that looks down into a ravine, which the river flows through and where the bridge is. That trail then leads off onto another pathway, which takes you to an old farm. As I looked down towards the bridge, I could see something big and black moving down that path running towards the bridge from the direction of the old farm. I actually thought about the cows that roam free here, and you know how they can be when dogs are around. But as it got nearer, it became clear to me that looking at was jet black and resembled a giant wolf. But it was running upright on two legs. It had big and broad shoulders and arms and a thin waist compared to the rest of the body. I can't say that it had canine legs or front-facing knees, but it was definitely upright, just like a human would be. It stopped at the end of the path and just stood there, looking towards the bridge. Its chest was heaving like it was breathing heavily, just waiting there until it got its breath back. For a few seconds, I just stared in disbelief, and then all of a sudden, it was gone. A few weeks later, I cleared a path near a fallen spruce that leads to a gate at the end of our wood. It wasn't too much work, and after clearing brambles, bending and snapping a few branches out of the way, it was done. The next day, I went out to use the path I'd cleared, and at the entrance, there was a hazel branch that had been bent over and was being held down by a broken log, literally blocking the path I had just made. I went and got my partner and asked him what he thought, because to me, there was just no way this could have happened on its own. He was inclined to agree, and I haven't moved the log or used the path because I feel something doesn't want me going in that part of the woods. Last summer, before I saw the creature down near the bridge, I decided to get a dog from the local rescue. I took him up in the woods to explore and have a bit of fun, playing with a stick. I didn't really know why, but he kept running off as if to chase something that I thought was squirrels. When I caught up with him, he would just stand barking, not at the tree, but in seemingly thin air. I thought this was very odd, and day by day it got worse as he would just stand near the house barking at the fence and the gate that led to the wood. Sadly, he never settled, and we had to find a quieter home for him. We do have a new dog, and she too is experiencing things on the land and at home. Thanks for reading.
Signed, Anonymous. Number 5 Hey TB, back in 2001 I was visiting my great uncle in the region around Caraville, Texas. At the time he was living in his first house in the area before he moved into a retirement community near a small set of trees. The trees were really beautiful, really as is the hill country in general. I was staying with him and my great aunt for about a week when we went out for an evening to walk his Labrador, as we tended to do in the evenings. The walk was uneventful as the sun set, just a normal evening, complete with the calls of doves and other wildlife, and the dog just had a wonderful time. Then suddenly, all the wildlife went deafeningly silent, and both of us froze, as did the dog. I remember having a distinct sense of unease and fear that I couldn't quite explain, and the dog looking directly into a specific area near a streetlight, my eyes turning to where the dog was looking, and there was a creature loping through there, a dog-like thing that was absolutely huge, probably four feet high at the shoulder. Save that on the creature's neck, there was a German shepherd-like head by the ears and the snout. This thing was loping up and down and up and down in a way that fitted that kind of build. It looked almost hypnotic in a sense, and I was more terrified than I've ever been with anything else I've ever saw. It gave me this visceral understanding of Lovecraft's idea that things just look fundamentally wrong are terrifying precisely because the proportions just don't fit. That thing was very powerfully built, the upper limbs in particular were very strong, stout, and muscular, giving it almost a top-heavy look, and the dog remained frozen for another few minutes before we moved back into the house. I'm not sure what precisely that was or if it was even a dogman, but it convinced me that something like that could exist. The sudden silence that lasted for a few minutes after it left and the dog just being frozen, without even growling or barking, still sends chills in me when I remember it. As my only encounter was something like a cryptid too, it remains something very vivid in my mind. Not least because I know how dogs move. I know what wolves would move like, and whatever that thing was, it was no natural sense that made any sense. Thanks. Signed. Daniel. And there it is. All I have for tonight on encounters with dogmen and canine cryptids. From the terrifying encounters shared in these stories, it's clear that the unknown world of cryptids holds mysteries to be unraveled. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any true stories and real reports of the unexplained. Thanks again for watching, and remember, stay curious, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you on down the road a ways. Biker, out.